You might say, I don't believe in God, but the Bible says not possible. See, everyone has a God, whether or not it's the God of the gospel. You might not believe in God, but everyone has that one thing that's king. Even the dictionary defines God as whatever we make supreme. Because it's a theme, it's a thread, you see it inside all human beings, the fact that we all worship. And no, it's not just about singing. Now I know you like, Jeff, I don't worship. I put that on the shelf, but I say technically we all worship. We just worship ourselves. See, we all worship something. To an object we're all liable, ladies, to some your boyfriend is your God, and Cosmo is your Bible. Yet, we mock and we laugh at the Israelites' golden calf, but we do the same thing right back. It just looks a little different than that. So question, what's on your throne? See, what do you chase so that you don't feel alone? See, what defines you? What do you give ultimate worth? And what, if taken, would bring ultimate hurt? Now see, that is your God. And all of us, we've sacrificed deep joy for shallow happiness. To be honest, we look like fools. We're like full-grown adults in the kiddie pool going, oh my goodness, guys, this is like so cool. Because we're slaves to our possessions. We're always craving something new, reality check. If you can't give it up, you don't own it. It owns you. And that's why the Bible, it says we're spiritual prostitutes. In fact, it even says we're worse because at least prostitutes get paid for their works. All we get paid is a hearse. And that's why worship, it's not just behavior. It goes way into our core to ask, what is your God? What do you bow down before? For example, some of us, we don't worship God, but we worship what he said. We got theology in our head, but in our hearts, poor, pitiful, naked, and dead. Or some of us worship in stadiums, or some of us worship in bars. Some of us worship our possessions, or some of us worship our cars. See, some of us worship science, or some of us worship the arts, but I don't care what clothes your idol's wearing, the disease is the heart. Or my favorite is those guys who say, Jeff, I'm a man because I'm in control. Okay, then tell me why can't you stop having sex with your hand while staring at your MacBook Pro? Or what about those guys who trade their wives for their jobs at work, give more time to their boss than their actual wives' needs or hurts? And ladies, ladies, no guy can love you more than Jesus already has, so stop putting your worth in Magic Mike. He's so much better than that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Jeff, are you saying that we should hate money, hate alcohol, and never have sex? No, but I'm saying God created those all to be enjoyed in their proper context. But I want to transition. I want to make a spiritual incision. Can we really say these things are the ultimate purpose of living? I mean, instead of worshiping the creator of you and I, we've all said, screw you, God, I'll take your stuff. But you can die. But that trade is terrible, trading God for man. It's like God offers us water. We say, but God, this is such good sand. Or my friends, they'll say, Jeff, a God that requires me to give up something, I just can't fathom. Yet most of us seem fine giving up everything for a quick orgasm. I mean, am I the only one who's felt the gnawing within? Am I the only one who's felt the weight of my own sin? But see, here's what's unique. Go ahead and critique, but if you hear anything, hear this one thing that I speak. Where we exchange ourselves for God, thinking we could be Him. He exchanged Himself for us, absorbing all our sin. I mean, God literally put on flesh, and do you see how He treated them? The ultimate war veteran, because He was killed for our freedom. Nonetheless, he was thinking of you and me with every whip that beat him, knowing full well we'd still go, nah, I don't really need him. But like a father, he couldn't bear his children to not be free. So he thought up that tree, paid our fee for specks of dirt like you and me. So my plea is let him restore his proper place. I promise he loves you right now. Just trust in his grace because before I leave, I'll leave you with this. What are those other things took nails in their wrists? Or how about when's the last time money or sex forgave you? When's your boyfriend set you free from all you're enslaved to? See, what else died so that you could be made new? Or when's the last time the world promised satisfaction and actually came through?